So what is up guys? Hello, how are you doing? This is Nick here from Everything Tech and today what I want to talk about is how to buy a laptop or choose a laptop here in 2016. It is August and a lot of us are going back to school here, at least in the US. I'm not sure if going back to school is like the same time frame in other countries. Let me know what time you go back to school if you're in another country. But at least here in the US, which the majority of the audience on this channel is, we are going back to school. And choosing a laptop is always a difficult task. And sometimes we get to the point where we're just like, you know what, I'm not even gonna buy a new laptop or I don't even wanna do this. Like when people just choose a laptop and it ends up being not the laptop they want. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm basically gonna lay down a baseline of what you guys need to know. Now I'm not gonna show specific laptops because for everyone's different needs, there's gonna be so many different types of laptops. But if you know this critical information, I think you will find a laptop that will serve you really well. So we're gonna talk about that right here in this video. Let's go. Okay, so you're going back to school, right? And you need a laptop. Well, the first thing you want to know is basically what kind of person are you? Are you a person who's just going to be doing light work, you know, Microsoft Office work, a few little programs here and there, but nothing too heavy within your class. You're just taking some notes here and there. I mean, for those kind of tasks, you could even get away with an iPad, to be honest with you, but uh, it would be a little bit of a stretch. You might have to get an extra keyboard accessory. But for light, light workers, I would say you're going to want to have this when you're looking at those specifications in the store and don't let the salesman fool you because they'll try to sell you the highest product, even though, or like a more higher price product than you actually need. But um, if you're looking at these specs and you're getting confused by all the AMDs and all the core I series processors, just be aware that if you're just doing light work and you're going to be opening up a few programs for your classes here and there, you don't need anything higher than the budget range of laptops. And that's going to be for the AMD side, it's going to be anything from the AMD A6 to the A10 processors. And it's going to be anything from the core I series to the I5 series. Now I5 is more medium to high end range, but we'll talk about that in a little bit, but you will only need at least an AMD A8 or A10. Or if you're looking at the Intel processors, you're going to want an I3 for that. Now I would stay away from those Pentium and Celeron processor computers, even for light work, because you know, in this day and age, we're always, you know, doing notes, we're going into our browsers and those tend to lag up and they're just a pain in the ass after a while, to be honest. So stay away from those Celeron Pentium processor laptops. They're not worth the money. Go with a core I series processor laptop or a higher end, well, you know, an AMD A8 or an AMD A10. So that's the processor. Now, when you go down the spec sheet a little bit, you're gonna look at something that says RAM. And what that stands for is random access memory. In layman's terms, all that means is, can I multitask faster with this computer than that one? So when you're hopping in between tabs here and there and here and there, that's where RAM is gonna play a role. And when you got multiple programs open at the same time and you wanna do multiple things at the same time, that's where higher RAM comes into play. Now, what you're gonna to wanna to look for if you're gonna be doing light stuff, at least four gigabytes of RAM. Four GBs is like the standard now to get you in. That'll be fine for just, you know, doing some office work, you know, a Microsoft Office, going into the browser, going into a, you know, maybe two browsers at once, that'll be fine, four gigabytes of RAM. But if you're somebody who's gonna be going to film school or you're gonna be doing like um, anything more heavy that requires something like a heavier, like your graphic designer, you're gonna need something that, you know, runs, you know, runs the computer a little warmer, it takes a little bit more CPU power, and you should know this if you know if you're gonna be using these programs. It's, you're gonna want at least eight gigabytes of RAM, bare minimum for that. Now, if you're someone who is looking for something really powerful in the RAM section, you're gonna wanna look for 16 gigabytes. So like I say, for the budget line of uh, people who are just gonna do light stuff, look for at least an AMD A8 or A10 processor or on the Intel side, a Core i3 or Core i5. And then on the RAM, look for at least four to eight gigabytes of RAM for your CPU or for your RAM. And now in terms of the storage, now let's just explain a little bit of difference of SSD and hard drive. You're gonna see SSD on the spec sheet as well as HDD, which stands for hard drive disk or solid state disk there on your storage. Now, basically the difference between those is opening the files is a lot quicker on the SSD and on the hard drive, it's a mechanical disk, so it spins, so it's just a little bit slower. 
Think of it like this. The SSD is like the storage you have on your phone where you open it and it's just boom, it's open. And then on the computer, it's a spinning disk. So you gotta wait for it to spin and load up your files. So it does take a little bit more time. And actually it's a lot more time on the HDD. But at the end of the day, it's not so much different that, you know, you would have, you. I would recommend you go drop a hundred or 200 bucks more on a hard drive. So in the budget line, we're still on the budget people or you know, the lower end that doesn't really need that much power, you're gonna want at least maybe 256 gigabytes or 128 gigabytes if you're gonna be going with external SD on the SSD. If you go with the hard drive, most computers come with 500 to one terabyte. That should be plenty to store your things on a hard drive. So if you're looking at a hard drive, don't get anything less than 500 gigabytes. If you're looking at an SSD, don't get anything less than 128 because you're gonna be really scratching for storage there in the future. Now I wanna speed this a little bit up. So we talked about those three categories. Those are the three categories you're gonna really wanna look at in the laptop is processor, the, um, what is it, the RAM and the storage. So those are the top three specs you're gonna see on most spec sheets. And those are the things you wanna look for the budget. So I said AMD A8 to A10, you're looking for on a laptop, you're gonna look for at least four to eight gigabytes of RAM and you're gonna look for um, solid state. If you go with solid state storage, you're gonna wanna look for at least 128 gigabytes to 256 and on the hard drive, at least 500 to one TB or terabyte, which is 1000 gigabytes. Now for the middle range people, these are people who need a little bit more power, a budget laptop, is hicking up here and there. That's kind of like me. I'm more in the mid-range power right now. I'm actually going to be upgrading this laptop. You see right there. I don't know if I could, you could see it right there, HP right there. That's actually an i3 laptop with eight gigabytes of RAM. And I'll be upgrading that soon. I don't know when. But um, so for the middle range people, you're going to want to look for at least an i5 series processor or uh, AMD A10. So A10 is actually the middle range too. AMD A10 or i5 processor, you know, you're going to look for those and look for at least the sixth generation one. What that means is you'll see a six at the first number to be like 6200U. And then on the, just look for the latest AMD A10 there for the middle range processors. Now for middle range people, eight gigabytes minimum of RAM. 12 would be great for the mid-range people. I would recommend go to 12. 8 gigabytes will work, but you're going to be scratching a little bit for, you know, a little more RAM. So go with 12 gigabytes. So AMD A10, 12 gigabytes of RAM. And um, in terms of the storage, if you're in the middle range, you're definitely going to want, if you're going with a hard drive, one terabyte and an SSD, 256 to a 500 gigabyte SSD. And uh, the price does go up there depending on the laptop you choose. Now for the high end people, the people who need the highest end of the laptop spectrum, you just need the best. Now, if you're not into laptops, you're not gonna know this, but you are, it's pretty obvious. You're gonna wanna go with an i7 processor on the Intel side, and you're gonna wanna make sure that you get at least 16 gigabytes of RAM if you're doing high end work. You're gonna want that because that'll make everything just so efficient for you. 16 gigabytes of RAM, i7 processor. If you're going with a hard drive, at least one to two terabytes. I would say two terabytes if you're doing high-end stuff because if you're in a professional field, you're gonna need the storage. So I would recommend one to two terabytes, two terabytes if possible if you go with a hard drive. If you go with an SSD, it's gonna climb a lot in price for a uh, higher storage SSD, but minimum 500 gigabyte SSD for you. Try to find one with one terabyte. I don't even know if, you know, those are pretty hard to find, but you know, at least minimum 500 gig. Now, that's pretty much it. We talked about the, the lower end, like the middle line, and then we talked about the higher end. Now, in terms of the actual laptops, I'm not gonna sit here and show you a 1,001 laptops. If you're buying from HP, you're buying from Dell, you're buying from Apple, you're buying from Lenovo, you're buying from Asus, all these guys have been making laptops for a long time. And as long as you buy one with those specs that fit your needs that you found out in this video, you should be just fine in terms of, you know, the power. Like they're all really, they all been working on computers a long time. So it doesn't matter if you get an HP, an Asus, a Dell, a Lenovo, an Apple. In terms of the actual horsepower and what you're gonna do, Windows 10 is highly optimized as well as Mac OS. It's not a big difference here in 2016. So yeah, in terms of why some people think that the MacBook is so much more, it's because Mac Macs don't make they don't only they only make premium laptops. And a lot of people look at Mac and then they see a four hundred dollar PC or a laptop and they're like, why is Mac so expensive? Because they're you know they're comparing things, but 
they should take into the account that the MacBook is only a premium laptop. If you look at premium laptops from Dell and HP, they're in the same price range as a MacBook. So yeah, you just kind of got to decide which operating system at the end of the day you're more invested. Are you more invested in Apple's OS with iTunes and all that, you know, stuff? If you're in that OS, I would highly suggest going with a MacBook. But if you don't really you do all that, you know, ecosystem handoff features and this and that, Windows PCs will work for plenty of people. There's plenty of Macs or oh, iPhone supported stuff, iPad supported stuff. You can do all your iTunes on a Windows PC. It doesn't really matter which OS you go with unless you want that continuity. But I hope this helped you guys out in choosing your laptop in 2016. I know it was a little bit of a lot of information, but I think I gave you some baseline things to know when you go into a store. And even though I didn't have the laptops to show you here, I do believe that this information should help you out and choosing your next laptop at the store. If it did, please go ahead and click the like button for me down below. If you guys have anything to talk about in relation to these laptops or anything like that, please go ahead and drop that down in the comment section. You can help out other users who are watching this video and they're you know in the market for a new laptop. You could really help them out as well. And that's awesome because all we want to do here is help everyone out and share with the community. So anyways, I will catch you all in the next episode. Have a great day wherever you are. Be sure to be well, enjoy your next laptop, and peace. You forgot about Chromebooks. Only get a Chromebook if you're highly tech savvy and you know how to, you know, substitute Google programs for all the Windows programs that most colleges use. And you're not gonna need power to go four or five years because a Chromebook is more of a mobile operating system computer. If you need to get super, super light stuff done, go with a Chromebook. For, but for most people, I still think Windows 10 and Mac OS is gonna be the way to go for a laptop going into college, doing professional work. And as of right now of 2016, that is what I would suggest. Catch you later. Hey, no, no, no.